Hold on a second, Keisha. Just let me ask Ronald exactly what's going on because it takes two to tango and I need to hear his side of the story. So she's driving me insane. Got stress heavy on my brain. She keeps playing silly games. Man, I'm about to bring the pain. We seem to fuss and fight every day and every night. Please give some advice so we can see. I'm Zo Williams, the voice of reason. If your relationship is in trouble, I'm the dude to call. Has your soulmate become your cellmate? Does black love still exist? What are your bedroom turnoffs? Fantasies and fetishes. Financial infidelity. I'm dating a fat person. Are they worth the wait? wait. Trust me, this gonna be crazy. How about the heavy stuff? The child wasn't his, and he still had to pay child support. It's a very heated topic. I was that right? Mama's baby, daddy's maybe. I just have so many questions I want to ask you. I don't like to kiss a woman's ass. Is there something wrong with that? Damn. <laughs> he helped me out of a second. I'm pregnant. The trail has been committed. Hit you with a bad yeah. hydro routine. How does he maintain his humpacity? He likes it when it pinches my nip. Why can't you open up, brother? I'm a karate man. Karate man rules on the inside. They don't show their weaknesses. Yeah. How do you write women so well? So William. Reason and accountability. The voice of reason. Of reason. You already know what it is. The man, the myth, the legend. I'm in the building. Zoe Williams, the voice of reason. It's about to be crazy as hell up in here. That's all I can tell you. I guess you could call it hell up in Harlem. Hell up in Harlem, ladies and gentlemen. The whole squad is descending upon this show right now. The whole squad. I can't even lie to you. Corey Holcomb. Bobby Glanton. Ray Grady. Slink Johnson. It's about to be a whole world of folk up in here so I'm glad I get to talk to you a few seconds before everybody starts piling in this is the voice of reason on Dash Talk X one of the coldest shows in the game let me put it in the frame it's about to be crazy that's all I can tell you The room is empty right now. But don't let that fool you. Don't let it fool you to go Bobby G. Hey, can I tell y'all a little something? Mansions was designed as an outgrowth of the Voice of Reason show. And the reason why is because we felt like we needed a bunch of men to be able to come in and put down some real game about relationships. Bob, you can't move all the way to the corner. I need you right over here so I can get you in that shot, bro. And if we could just move all these chairs down. Dash Radio, I know y'all listening to me right now. Let me get Bobby's mic on. Speak on it, Bobby. I'm in the witness protection program. Dash Radio, if you're listening right live, please understand that you're also listening to a live broadcast to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is The Zo What Show. All one word. And let me tell you a little bit about mansions, man. 
brothers come in here, we sit down, we build, we get deep. It's like a barber shop. You understand? It's a barber shop where men get to be unapologetically men. Now you saw that uh, Gillette commercial, right? Where you know a lot of people are saying it's an it's a, a ad against toxic masculinity. Man, I can't even begin to tell you. Ain't nothing toxic about us in here. We gonna talk like we at the barber shop getting a fade. But here we go. Before I even get involved, I gotta tell y'all a couple of things. Everybody in here right now has to go get my audio book. The audio book. The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship. You got to get your copy right now. It's on Audible. Before I even get into the topic. Audible. We released it December 28th. I need everybody in the chat room to hit the like button. Hit the share button. You're listening to Dash Talk X. This is the voice of reason. I'm turned up right now because this show is about to go through the roof. If you're a father and you got a daughter, you want her listening to this show tonight. You under dig? If you got a daughter, hold on one second. If you got a daughter, if you got a daughter, you got to listen to this show. It's important. Now, let me get back. Total Package Energy, one of my sponsored drinks, you got to get it. You got to get Total Package Energy. Total Package Energy brought to you by my good friends out of the Bay Area. You under dig? They got a great product, Total Package Energy. Man, when I tell you we about to turn up the Voice of Reason Mansions, let me welcome Bobby. Bobby Glanton Smith, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Zoe. Bobby, did you mess with my volume over there? No, it was too loud for me. But I'm going to plug it in over here and see if I can get some action. So you, you did mess with my bo- volume. Well, he fixed that, though. He told me. Okay, because hey, um, I, I, y'all can't mess with my volume over there now. I ain't trying to mess with nothing, <laughs> brother. I'm just trying to keep my hearing. What's left of it? Your, what's left of your hearing? Yeah. Oh, my God. So let's just break it all the way down, man. Zoe Williams, Dash Radio, Dash Talk X, The Voice of Reason, Mansions. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mondays are for women. Round table of women come in here and get busy. Friday, for women. The women come back. But Wednesdays has transformed into mansions. Mansions. Men. Building. Brought to you by Total Package Energy. Brought to you by the Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship, now on Audible. Also, everybody in the chat room, I'm telling you right now, go get, somebody said, okay, go get the Holographic Relationship. Go there now. My website is IamZoeWilliams.com. IamZoeWilliams.com. Go there now. Click shop, then books, and we good. I am ZoeWilliams.com. Go do it now. So, Bobby, let me just get with you real quick, man. You saw the little girl get socked in the head? Uh, I couldn't really watch it, but, you know, I've read all the accounts of it, and I did hear the... Um, Corey Holcomb 5150 show last night um, and I'm 
you know, up to speed in terms of, you know, the varying opinions about what happened. Why couldn't you watch it? It's just not something that I, I get any joy out of seeing, man. You know. Who wants to see a little girl get socked in the head by a grown ass white man? No, I'm not with that. Now, what I found interesting in terms of the show last night was, uh, whew, man, we got to rebuild the village, man, because. I cringe at the thought of being in a situation where I get mobbed by a gang of young male or female children. Children. And then have to figure out what's my best option in that instance. I think I would pr- I would try to move away from that if I could possibly, but if confronted, uh, whew, man, that's... That's a bad, bad situation to be in. A whole mob of kids trying to beat your ass. Uh, now, 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 if it gets to that point, I got to work my way out of that. Bobby, is running ever an option when you're in that situation? It's the first option in that situation. It's the first option because I'm aware of the optics. So that's the first thing I want to do is try to move away from it. But there are situations that do arise where you cornered. Wow. We got another brother in the building right now. How you doing? Please introduce yourself to the folks while you got your minute to shine, brother. <laughs> uh, Chris Riggins. Uh, Chris from, Riggins. Yes, sir. Comedian. Yes, comedian Chris Riggins. Father. Father of two daughters. Two daughters. Two. 14 and 8. How much responsibility is on that child's parent? <sighs> it's 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 tough to say. Because I'm, ask, I'm asking you for as me, a father. As a father, it, I, I would take 100%. For I'm, I'm going to say, because if your daughter ran up on a grown-ass man, would that be indicative of the lessons you taught her about how to interface with grown-ass men? No. It wouldn't be indicative of what I taught her. It'd be indicative, knowing my daughter, it would be indicative of what she's learned in society and from her friends and what her friends expect. And, you know, even to an extent, the, the music and the entertainment, you know, and this whole culture we have now where everything going viral is you know like the world star generation so yeah i i me personally i would take responsibility because i would feel like i failed i did something wrong if she felt that listening to her friends and stuff and doing that was right i would definitely feel a failure but at the same time i'd hold her accountable for her part too wow ladies and gentlemen you're listening to mansions on dash talk radio dash talk x I'm waiting for all my guests to get into the building. Corey Holcomb, Slink Johnson, Ray Grady, Bobby Glanton, Smith, Riza Islam, and Chris Riggins. Chris Riggins. We in the building right now. Today's topic, daddy, daughter, defense class. Mm. A deeper look at how black fathers should prepare their daughters for life in the real world. See? All that neck rolling y'all do with each other. You know them women, sisters? Neck rolling you do to your daddy. Neck rolling you do to your mama. Mm-hmm. Neck rolling you do to your boyfriend. That shit only work with people that love you. <laughs> exactly. But, am I lying, Bobby? Is that Chattanooga or is that Murfreesboro? It's all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Talk man. to me, man. When neck rolling goes bad. That's the precursor to the super sock. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Are we blaming the little girl? No. We can't blame the little girl. Period. How old was she? I didn't get that. 11. Ooh. Yeah. Well, 11 is 15, 16 now. In terms of perceived consciousness. Well, with our children especially. All the kids. Anybody that's exposed to modern culture, Mm -hmm. they are inundated 24 hours a day yep. with these visual images of the possibilities of behavior. Now, mm-hmm. what doesn't come with that is any disclaimers. Yes. This will cause you bodily harm, mm-hmm. possibly death. If so, you're not careful. Yeah. These I mean, hands. It's just where we are, and, and it's one of the greatest challenges we have right now is reclaiming the narrative and, more importantly, the mindset of young people. Well, the thing we have to keep in mind also is even at 11 with all the visuals and the, the, the advancement of the 24-hour news cycle that our kids are living in, they're still children. And no matter how advanced the society and technology is, the human mind 
It's still what the human mind is. So at 11, you're still 11 mentally, but you're being forced to see adult things happening. You're forced to be. And like I said before, with our children, black children, our children are not given the opportunity to be children very long. Mm. Our ki- our children are children from right. about like zero to three, and right. then they I mean, they you a grown ass motherfucker, you a grown ass motherfucker <laughs> because like even even ourselves like we even treat our kids like that. We even start you know beating our kids and treating our kids like adults, and it's not because we hate our kids or we're bad parents. It's because we know that world is going to do a lot worse to our black kids, and we want to toughen them up. And then you get the situation with the young sister who's eleven. I'm I don't know her life, but what I saw in that video was I saw a young girl who has been allowed to act adult. A lot who may have been forced into adult uh, positions, such as taking care of siblings while mom goes to work. So I'm a, she may hey, be that adult. Chris, I'm going to say this, man. The phone lines are open. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. That's 323-230-4610. You're listening to the Voice of Reason on Dash Talk X. I am him. This is my mansion series. I'm going to say this. When you're talking to a kid, you're talking to, and I said this before on another show, you're talking to an ice tray. An ice tray is a frame. When you're talking to a kid, you're talking to a frame mm-hmm. of some parents or lack thereof. Yep. <laughs> you understand? You're talking to a model. They don't know how to rewrite their narrative or where they're from. That's when you're becoming an adult. Yeah. When you become an adult, that's when you be, you're able to say, oh, no, the, I, I don't accept this from my childhood. I don't accept this from my parents. Hey, you know what? I've overcome this. I've overcome that. I've grown through that. That's an adult. But when you're talking to a kid, you're talking to an ice tray, a frame. And the way that little girl responded, she responded in a way that she must have seen. Somebody in her family did. At, in her environment. Mm-hmm. More than once. Yeah. You don't get there overnight. No. Because I I went back to uh, my hometown of, of Murfreesboro, Tennessee a couple of months ago, and I went back to my elementary school. And I walked down those hallways, and I realized how they construct elementary schools. The desks are small. Everything is smaller. And as a grown person, when I walked through there, the first thing I said, damn, man, this place is totally different mm-hmm. because of my vantage point as an adult. Mm-hmm. And then I I, I I rolled the tape back and I looked at how I felt about uh, grown folks. They were giants. Yeah. It never crossed my mind to challenge a grown person. But as we have evolved as a society, somehow that element of the physical nature of human beings has, has diminished to the point where children look at us like equals. Yeah. And the problem with that is you can't teach an equal. Mm. 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 That's real. And they need Ooh. to be taught some things, Ooh. life lessons, That's before they experience the consequences of their actions. You can't teach an equal. Nope. And Ooh. as a comedian, I've seen that a million times. You know, you try to give another comedian, hey, look, on this joke, you should do it this way. And they're like, nah, I know. And it's just you can't teach somebody who thinks they the same level as you in go to speak like you know we said before is the society we live in has given kids that mindset that hey we're all equal we've gotten this society where we're telling everybody has these everybody's equal everybody's the same and it's like no everybody's not the same okay mm-hmm. there's hierarchies there are going to be systems in place where you're not going to be the top dog you're not going to walk into an entry-level job and tell the ceo to kiss your ass no you're going to kiss his ass until you get to be the ceo that's how it works and what we've done we've have eliminated that through and i hate to say it our kids are being raised through screens. Mm. They're looking at these phones. They're looking at these laptops. I go home and my two daughters are sitting in separate parts of the same room in different parts of the world on their on their devices. But it's- how, as a father of two fathers, uh, uh, two daughters, I'm gonna come back to you, Bobby, real quick. As a matter of fact, go ahead with your point, Bobby, and then I- I'll ask him this question. Well, he mentioned phones, and <clears throat> the biggest misnomer is that it's a smartphone because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's crazy now that. I have to catch myself and realize, let me read something. Actual pages. Yeah, read something and process what I'm reading as opposed to having to try to break down information that's just thrown at me without any filters. Mm -hmm. And the decision-making process is altered tremendously to the point where I'm having to rely on information without having thought about 
How does that fit into my square? Yeah. Wow. Brother, you're a father of two daughters. Mm -hmm. Brother Chris Riggins. Comedian. Yes, actor. Sir. On the come up. <laughs> father of two daughters. How do you teach them how to interface with or what do you teach them regarding interfacing with adult men, whether it be teachers, whether it be family members, whether it be friends? How should they how should they act? How should they carry themselves? Well, when I do with my daughters and, you know, it's it's there's no handbook to how to raise children, period. Mm. Um, I have to present myself in the way that I want them to perceive other male adults. Uh, my father, I'm fortunate to have my father still alive and around, and he's a big part of their life. Uh, their mother's father is a big part of their life. They have, I keep them around men who I feel safe with, who wow. I know will protect them as I protect them. And the thing is, we have to understand, we can't protect them from everything. We can prepare them. We have to prepare them. And the way I teach them is, look, you are a child right now. Mm -hmm. I am a male adult. Yes, we joke. We have a good time. I let you guys get your little smart remarks in sometimes. We have a good relationship. But when it's that time that dad is in charge, yeah. you don't have to fall in line. Right. Because I'm not going to be getting these reports from, like, you going to school and you not falling in line because you weren't taught this at home. Right. And it's simple. It doesn't require, like, you know, people think you have to beat your kids to get this. No. You just have to assert that dominance. You know, kids are like like dogs. They're like pack animals. Uh -huh. You're the alpha male. You're the you're the top dog. You're the and, leader and, of the pack. And kids know the dad switch. Oh, they do. You remember the dad? You know the dad switch. Mm. You know he had dad maybe had a day or two or or a moment or two where he was he was warm. He was inviting. He might even crack a smile. Might even giggle and laugh with you a little bit. But when he switched, mm -hmm. you knew like, oh, he ain't playing. That he ain't playing switch. You know what I'm talking about, Bobby. Not directly, but here's what I do know. Because my father uh, died when I was six years old. But more importantly, there were enough father figures in the community that if I went over to somebody's house that had a father, I was able to use that as a frame of reference in yes. terms of what to expect from a father figure or a father if I ever had one. And so the generations that have um, come behind me, they don't have any of that. Mm. And it has altered the landscape in such a way, D, uh, um, I called you D. I was thinking <laughs> about a partner of mine, D Bradley, man, and he wrote a song about too much man to cry. And uh, those are the kind of things that we dealt with. The music, as much as anything, governed our behavior, you know, because we knew that if you made certain moves, you might have made your move too soon. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. And it would lead to some, some terrible consequences, <laughs> you know. And you can't stop time. I wish I could in many instances. Mm. But what I'm most concerned about right now is how do we break down this situation to the point where we can chip away at this gap between generations? And that's one of the reasons I'm thankful for being able to do shows like this yeah. and to speak from my vantage point because, as you can see, this is not lint on my face. <laughs> no, that ain't lint. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what happens when you get to be 64 years old. Um, the good part about it is I've learned to take care of myself. And that's the thing. I want to accept being the age that I am. I'm in that teaching phase. And at the same time, I'm still learning. And I, I, I watch people that are younger now that, that, that respond to instruction and try to feed into them as much as I possibly can mm -hmm. so that they can share a vantage point that I wouldn't be able to communicate to the generation beneath them. And that's my focal point right now is rebuilding some form of structure in our in our community and in our culture because we are just scattered to the point now where I look at young people and they look at me and I have to be very careful and sometimes more patient than I really want to be. Mm. Cause they don't, they don't even look like kids no more, do no, they, Bobby? Nope. No. You remember no. I used to look at kids? Oh, look at these <laughs> no, kids, man. No, these children I, running around. No. Now yep. they look like you got to measure some them monsters. Right. Like, <laughs> no, I, I dropped my daughter off for the first day of high school, and I was like, 
these kids is bigger than me. Hold up, which one of these niggas I'm gonna have to shoot first? <laughs> right. Because it's not it's a weight class issue now. <laughs> no, you know, it's it's right. a weight class issue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five four, hundred something. You yeah. five, you you yeah. five nine. Okay, yeah, bro, yeah, you an yeah, adult yeah, now. Yeah. In my book, yeah. you you full on adult. But yeah, it's 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 I I feel like the way we fix it and the way we have to start chipping away is is the accountability on all sides. Mm. What happens is a lot of people want to point fingers. Black men want to say, what's the black mothers who raised these kids crazy? And the black women, well, you guys weren't there. And it's like, hey, guys, it's both of us. Mm. How about that? We both messed up. We both fucked up, dropped the ball. We both need to figure out our points where we messed up, fix those, come together, and get it back together. Because in reality, this world is not going to stop. You know, time's not going to stop for our children. Like I said before, our kids are not allowed the same graces of growing up to be children as white children are in this in this America. No, mm. this is this is real talk. That's and, true. And we can't we can't in this and we can't baby them, but we can't take away their childness. And I think that's the 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 slope that we've been slipping on for a long time. You know what I mean? We've slipped on that slope of, you know, Wanting our kids to be more mature because we know the world's messed up, but still wanting them to be kids because we are the adults and we want them to know their place. So sometimes for a kid, that gets confusing. You're like, you want wait, wait, you want me to watch my brothers and sisters and have responsibility, but then when you come home, I gotta bow down, and it gets a little, you know, messed up. And then the the the, the media, and I hate to be that guy that says it's the media. I, I when I was young, I thought my parents were crazy for not for blaming rap music for stuff, and I was like, that's stupid. But now as I sit and I listen to Molly Parker set and I listen to all these songs and I hear these kids crying over this this rapper who brutalized his own baby mother and now they're crying over him saying he's the next Tupac. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we dropped the ball somewhere. Wow. Wow. <laughs> my Let- generation. I even say my generation has dropped the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Voice of Reason on Dash Talk X. I want to hear from fathers tonight. How do you raise your daughters? To deftly navigate this society without becoming a thought, without becoming a whore, a passive aggressive prostitute. You know what a passive aggressive prostitute is? <laughs> is bartering your integrity for resources. Your integrity, your body, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. A transactional, you know. Yeah. Person. How how do you do that, ladies and gentlemen? I've got questions. What happens when a father doesn't love their daughters? Mm. What happens to the daughter's mind and the way she views and evaluates men? What happens to her boy picker, so to speak, Mm -hmm. when she doesn't have the love of her father? Call us. The number to dial is 323-230-4610. True or false? Fathers should teach their daughters that they are not an object. And that way they can't be objectified. True or false? The number to dial is 323-230-4610. How can some women fix their broken relationships with their dads? As a necessity. Out of, oh, wow. I love it, Bobby. I love it. What I mean by that is, and it's not going to necessarily come from them, we have to create a space and a portal where when you hear this information, you know it applies to you. And that's one of the things that I'm working on right now on, on different levels with different uh, individuals. And I've come to the understanding that can't fix everything, but there's some things that I want to be able to focus on that's within my grasp. And and one of the things is uh, I got a meeting tomorrow with several construction industry people and uh, Southwest University about creating a space for us to, to create an apprenticeship program. Because one of the things to keep fathers from being fathers is the ability to provide economically for their family. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a friend in Atlanta by the name of Wendell Stimney, the president of the National Association of Minority Contractors, and he has a saying that I've incorporated into my uh, vernacular, and that is you can't lead people if you can't feed people. Mm -hmm. We have to develop a leadership class, not in an elitist kind of way, because a construction worker... Is, is flesh and blood. I mean, you go out there, it's not about your attire other than some work boots and some and some clothes that are endure the, the elements, okay? But it can pay you a living wage. The reason that becomes important as we address these kind of social problems is that they have an economic 
consequence. Mm -hmm. So if you're asking a man to be a father, he has to have an opportunity to provide for his family because ain't nobody going to listen to you if if they're hungry. Okay. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Welcome to The Voice of Reason. I need you to speak on it. Hello, my name is Dana. I'm calling from Pasadena. Dana from Pasadena. You know what tonight's topic is. Daddy-daughter self-defense class. How can our effect raise different kind of little girls? We need some different kind of little girls than the ones we got today. This is some strange shit happening. Mm -hmm. How do we affect our daughters and how do we as dads make them better? Talk to me. Okay, well, I'm not a man or a father, so I can only speak from my vantage point, but I do believe I still have something to offer. Um, what we need to start doing as a black community or neighborhood or whatever we're calling ourselves collectively is to be more mature. You think we're an immature it, culture society? Um, well, from the black collective, we're very immature because as women, we don't even pick really men to be uh, fathers to our children. What do you mean exactly? By Say that? more. Yeah. What I'm what I'm saying is is that the superficial things that as women we look for in men, we don't necessarily have. I mean, look for fathers for our children. Is he cute? Does he have a lot of money? I see her. Yeah. But I, what I, does he? What exactly does he do? We're looking for. Oh. Um, his, uh, you know, oh, my baby is going to be pretty. She's going to have light colored eyes. She's going to have a certain texture hair. But I think that's an American cultural thing because poor white people do the very same thing. If you watch shows like uh, My Gypsy Wedding, that's all that is about. It's mm -hmm. about the wrong people being together, making the wrong choices, making babies without the, the means to provide for them, without thinking, is this person I want to be with for the rest of my life? I think... That's an American thing more than a black thing because we are Americans. And at the end of the day, we, it, we do a lot of stuff that everyone in this country does. I think outside this country, it's very different. But here, I definitely see this as our Jerry Springer culture where white people do the exact same things that black people do. But we take blame for it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dana. Dana. Did you lose her? I lost Dana. You know, Dana... Um, Are you there? Call back, Dana. Thanks for calling. Call Dana, back. Call yeah. back. Call yeah. back, Dana. Call I'll tell you Dana. why. I wanted to ask the Danas of the world, if and, and anybody that can... What's the number again, Zoe? 323-230-4610. That's 323-230-4610. Call back, Dana. We want to hear from you. What's one thing you, as a caller and a listener to this show, feel would be important to do at your own level, wherever, whatever level you at, to contribute to rebuilding a survivable and sustainable black culture. Caller, you're on the air. Can you answer that question? I didn't hear the question. I'm on YouTube, so I'm, I guess I'm delayed. What's, what was the question? Come on in here, Corey Holcomb. Uh, come on in here, Corey and Grady. Everybody's in the building right now. We have a caller on the Man, line. I was listening to Corey Holcomb last night go in on that little girl. Yes. Hey, hey, listen. Yeah, what's your What's your name again and where are you calling from, young lady? We got to get you in here. Nicole from Florida. Nicole from Florida. It's ironic she mentioned Corey and he just walked in. Yes. Yeah, go so, ahead with it. So you had a oh. question about what we were talking about. Well, last night because I watched the 5150 show um, and I usually agree with what Corey say because women, we, we are, we, we are messed up. And sometimes when the relationship don't work out, we're, we're bitter towards the guys and we don't allow the kids to see the guys and they need that. I've been in relationships with guys who love their kids and are not able to raise them and to pull them in how they should be able to. But yeah, that little girl, shouldn't have ran up on that grown man but i don't think that a man should ever hit a little girl like that because she's still 11 so there's still a level of immaturity to her and a lot of times when kids are around other kids they do stupid stuff you know what i'm saying and 
and they're not thinking logically. Uh, in addition to that, what if your black behind hit a little 11-year-old girl? What you think would happen? You know what I mean? So I think that we have every right to get upset with that guy, um, but I can't go in on this little 11-year-old girl because she's misguided, she's young, and when we're kids, we do stupid things. You know what I mean? Corey Holcomb just joined the show, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's topic, let me get Corey up to up to speed <laughs> on what we talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know people been uh, talking about yesterday, man, that show <laughs> last night. Corey Holcomb, tonight we are talking about Daddy daughter defense class. Hulk smash, little bitch. A deeper <laughs> look at how black fathers should prepare their daughters for life in the real world. Now, this comedian right here, Craig Riggins, Chris. he is a father of two daughters. Mm-hmm. You got a daughter. I got a daughter. Mm-hmm. I have a granddaughter. Grady? All boys. He got mm. a, got a gr- oh, granddaughter. She's well protected. Now, and then Rizza just joined us too. Rizza Islam is in the building. I love Rizza. That's, that's my, my that's the dog right there, man. I can't wait to hear what he says about what happened to that little girl. So I'm curious as, on his opinion. As men and fathers, grandfathers and grandfathers, how do we prepare our daughters, these women? How do we prepare them for the streets, Corey? That's what this lady wants to know right now. Throughout the Bible, bitches have destroyed everything. (laughs) Everything. I might be a little loud with it, but it's all good. Go ahead. If you know, if you know about this shit, this this is what has happened. If you have misguided women, the nation will be destroyed. And I believe that Caucasian leadership has done this on purpose. So we went, we in a situation of chaos right now because a lot of people have been saying to me, like I've been, t- I was taken up for the guy. Look, I try not to say nothing about what the dude did because I know he must've known he was going to jail. If you punch a, a kid, a, a, a kid right. and I bet he didn't right. know that girl was 11 years old. Cause even when they said 11 to me, I was like, but at the same damn. time, he wouldn't have did it to a white girl. He wouldn't have did that. But you to can't say what girl. he would have did. I can't, but we know America. You speculate. <laughs> we know, right. we know white men don't look at all, uh, us and white and black women the same as they I look agree. at white women. I agree. They protect white women. That's why they vote for Trump. And then they seen, shit on us. I just seen white dudes knock white bitches oh, yeah. out. Well, I'm saying something. the whole nation is in chaos. But what I want to make sure I emphasize is my thing was to talk about the discipline of the of the child who unfortunately has parents that allowed her to be eleven years old at the eleven years old at the mall unsupervised. Mm. That's the main thing right. I want to say. In a so, group of okay. kids who right. probably was not. And there is proof that she touched that grown man. In fact, it's proof that she touched him twice. And I'm I'm not taking up for nothing the grown man did, but I I, I would love to say this to those who will listen. Mode. Anything can happen. Of course. Anything can happen. There's something about us. Once we are like, mm-hmm. hey, anything can happen. As men. <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> y'all already know how how we are as men. Um, I don't have daughters, but I got a granddaughter, and I think the leadership starts at home. Know your place when you're dealing with men. Know your fucking place. That's the problem. A lot of people, a lot of chicks don't know their place because the man that was Around them or grew up with them, then let them know. You don't ever get in no man face. I think Understand. everybody waiting on me to take up for the white man. Uh-uh. I think everybody waiting on me to say what he did was justified. All I'm telling you is it's this. It's a complicated world. <laughs> it, it is complicated, it's, but just know this. Yeah. When a man is on motherfucking defense protection mode or whatever, he's a vigilante. Anything could happen. If somebody needs to tell these Young ladies who be trying people, yeah. obviously they try people at home, that you are in a very dangerous spot right now. Wow. Um, you want to say something? Right? While you, you, well, you setting up, there's two things, the Stockholm Syndrome that you're real familiar with, and then there's the fight or flight 
syndrome. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And I don't know nothing about that. Who don't? I didn't know nothing about it. That's what, what I'm listening to you. What, fight or flight? Yeah. It happens in the instant that that that, that um comp- it complements what you're saying. It correlates what you're saying. In other words, you don't even see it coming, but it's just in your DNA. If you, if somebody gets too close to you, mm-hmm. whether it's male, female, friend or foe, you go yeah. into a fight or flight position. Yeah. It just happens instinctively. Yeah. And you and, and you might not even realize that you reacted. Well, no, it's like Afro Man. You when Afro Man punched that white woman that came on stage while he was performing, he had his back turned, doing his solo. She comes up behind him. He just turns around and knocks her smooth out. Everybody was like, oh, he's a woman beater. And I was like, no, he didn't know that was a woman. He felt somebody behind him and just reacted. And everybody was trying to come down on him, trying to end his career. And I'm like, nah, that was self-defense. First of all, security should have stopped her from getting on stage. She crossed the boundaries. And it's like you said, know your fucking place. Not even with just men. Do you everybody. Think that was that with that white man? They can't hear you, Corey. You got you, you need a mic to ask that question. Come on. I just want to ask you. What, did you, you saw what happened with yeah. that little girl. Do you think that that was racism? No. Or was that... Um, Self defense. It was. It was, was that instinct had kicked instinct. in. I don't know what it's called, but I know. I know what it's like. I can't say I would have did the same thing if I was surrounded by a bunch of kids. I'm small, so I'm. Rizza Islam <laughs> just joined the discussion. It's Mansions on Dash Talk X. I'm telling you right now, this is where real men come together and build on the truth from a male perspective. Here we go, Rizza. Your thoughts. Currently in America right now, you have white men who have felt emboldened or felt empowered by Donald Trump being elected into office. So you have white men feeling justified for doing things to, in particularly black women, and then, of course, things to black men. So you have a white man who, what it seemed like is that he was protecting his family, but he was surrounded by black women, and they didn't show the backstory. But this white man, clearly six foot five, I believe, or six foot six, 250 pounds, Definitely had the edge over all of these little girls. So he could have just, like he did the first time, you pushed the girl in the 11-year-old. He could have did the same thing again as he was walking by, just pushed him out the way. The man is huge. But he looked and he said, well, you know what, let me take this as an opportunity to stand my ground in a southern state that used to uphold slavery. So I can go ahead and do my thing as a white man and I won't be prosecuted for it. And so he took advantage of the self-defense Peace and the stand your ground peace as well. And that is what made him feel justified to not only defend, but knock out a black girl. Well, Corey Holcomb. Wait, wait, wait. Corey Holcomb, but, then Chris. Is, but yo, this is so important. <laughs> this is so important. We can speculate who he is, where his mindset was, and right, everything. Right, right, right. We could say, oh, he's a big racist, or, or whatever we want to say. What I want to say to you, um, black girls, uh, black boys, um, people who are about what's right. Do not run up on nobody and expect the world to protect you. Mm-hmm. If you are bold enough to run up on someone, this is what happens. This is what happens. I'm saying in the real world, you might get somebody, an adult, who can control himself mm-hmm. and be like, look now, go on and just keep pushing you. But a lot of times... The way this world worked, you run up on fucked up individuals that's willing to fuck you up. Yeah, might so, have had a bad day. Too. Right. Let's not speculate. Teach the kids to do what's right before they get killed. Because they can get killed out there. Mm. Yeah. As we see all the time. What happened to don't start now and won't be none? That's exactly. that was that's how I was raised. It was like And once again, I say all you people who think I'm gonna take over that white man, you rogue. I'm this, just telling what, you what, what about happened. This? Let me let me pose this question to everybody. Can you tell the modern day woman, sit back and know your place? Hell no. (laughs) The reason why I say that, because that's a know your place moment. Grady just brought it up. Grady, talk to us about telling you, 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 especially girls in your family. Because you know how we are. If the girls come to us and say, my husband put his hands on me, what we going to do? We going to go over there. That's what we're going to do. But the, but do you see what mm. I'm saying? What's the know your place part? <laughs> first of all, you, you can't do shit with no man, first of all. Okay? And then the guys that have daughters or whatever that have sisters that do loud talk, you kind of know kind of know your subject because of the lineage that it come from. The grandmother might be loud as shit. The mama going to be loud as shit, so now the daughter going to be loud as shit. Now, I'm not saying whatever he did was 
justified, but yes, the woman's supposed to know her place because she's dealing with a male. He's not thinking emotionally. Men think of instincts only with logical creatures. Now, I get some that's going to be emotionally, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, yeah, she she's supposed to know right from wrong. Yeah. So you are supposed to tell her what. Because if you got a daughter, she can't get in no man's face. Yeah. Well, it's like what you were saying. And I said it also. It's so much that goes into that situation. Yes, there is the underlying effect of a white man, black child. Yeah. Would he do the same thing to a white girl? That's why I thought. But at the same time, there's that element of, hey, hey, little girl, why are you getting in this man's face? Why, why, you know, like, honestly, I'm one of those people, like, you can yell. I don't care. If you want to yell and scream, fine, do that. You get in my face and touch me, then but we to, have reached another level. But to Corey's point, when he... Him twice. Yeah, what's that said? It's a complicated situation. You can't you can tell a woman, know your place. You can tell, now, whether she a bad bad. A bad that's you gotta, the, you gotta know. Yeah, you gotta know your place. That was a biblical. It's word. just like if men is in, if if a man come home and a wife is a, his wife or his girl got all her girls there. Fuck you doing in their conversation. Mm-hmm. Carry your retarded ass in the garage. Go smoke your cigar. Watch TV. You do what men do. You do not be around and all that feminine shit going on. <laughs> you cannot be in there if you're a male. You cannot be in there with all that feminine shit because you're mm-hmm. going to start to rationalize bullshit because you're around nothing but broads in there. Wow. Go call your uncles. Go sit down. Talk boxing. Do sports. Be a mechanic. If you don't know how to do a, a oil change, learn. That's mm-hmm. the issue. A lot of niggas is too busy trying to be around and want to be like women. Because they keep the broads close. And that is exactly where my point is going. In American society, we have been denatured and our gender roles have been switched Mm. on purpose. Mm. So when a man says a woman should know her place, where the hell is her place today? In American society, a woman is a man. Well, I'm just saying, I'm going to say this. Hey, 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 Rizzo, I'm going to throw it right back to you. That's just like these women outside. I just open the door and say, hey, could you guys keep it down? They say, could you change the way you tell me that? Mm. I changed the way I what <laughs> you out here yelling. Mm-hmm. Be quiet! It's a live show going on. And you Be didn't quiet. go out. You didn't go out there like bitches. <laughs> shut up! I didn't say bitch. Shut the fuck. You was up. like, hey, could right. y'all keep like you would talk to any adult? And that's that's where my thing is. Like, I said it's a live show going on. Can you guys let's, keep it down? Let's, well, can you say it differently? Who and the, the reason fuck? they do that is because you don't even know who you talk to. The reason they do that is because they ain't got no fear of you. They have been taught that whatever you do, you get in trouble for doing what you're yeah. supposed to do to me. Well, that's why that little girl said, pushed that man twice in my society opinion. Society has taught him that. That's, and there's the thing. I don't believe a man should go out rightfully and hit a woman. But in self-defense, if you're going to hit a man, you have crossed that line. Your instinct you kicks in. Here's the thing. I'm not going to say no reason. Like you said, that girl hit him twice. He let her hit him twice before he responded. I, I, can't, don't have be, to, I can't fault him at that point. I don't like, have hey, you know to what? wait till somebody hit me. To let them know with my eyes and maybe my mouth, bitch, I'm not the one. Yeah. I Easy. will super sock your ass. But <laughs> get the no, fuck away from me. But it's like I ass. said, what <laughs> happened to the, <laughs> what happened to the <laughs> don't start none, won't be none. Don't write no checks, your ass can't cash. Bitch. That's where I come from. A so lot. it doesn't matter if you're male or female. As a human being, as a human being, Ray Grady, I respect you. I respect you as you and me, no matter what our gender is. But that's where but, we need to but start. Let me, but let me say this. Let me say this. How then do we begin to raise our daughters to be able to navigate through this society? So, so watch. I got, I got one for you. Yeah, of course. Hey, Chris, Chris, swap out with Slink. Let's get Slink in here real quick. And then we're going to get Rizza on this, too, because I have a very vital question to ask all the fathers in here. I got it. I got the answer. Let me ask the question again. Here's a question. Let me go. No, no, no. Slink this guy. Go ahead. No, I got the answer. Should modern day black fathers get their daughters who are of age? Slink Johnson, Black Jesus has just joined the show. Hey, sorry, I'm late. Get their daughters who are of age licensed to carry. The well, only reason it's, why it's, it's, it's a, it, you know what you know what you know what Zoe. It's a few it's a few ways I want to answer that. One. 
Well, first of all, I say it depends on how you raise your daughter. See, the question you asked the first, how can we raise our daughters or whatever you said? To navigate, to navigate through, through this society. Through, you tell them the fucking truth and quit sugarcoating shit and telling them niggas ain't shit, I ain't shit. Look, you, your brothers, and your sister, all y'all got different mamas. So we around here just doing what the fuck we want to. And again, that's just that's that's just to paraphrase it. It might be a bad example. But shit, man, you got to tell them the truth, man, and quit sugarcoating that shit. And, you know, again, you got to teach your daughters. I feel like me being a father of two daughters, I got to teach her, you know, to love and respect herself and, and, and to know her value. There we go. But to also, you know, know, know your value, but to also know the dirty tactics these, do, these dudes do, the shit we do. I ain't going to say the dirty tactics, the shit niggas do to get trimmed. You know right. what I'm saying? Because we all done capitalize on some trim at some point. You know right. what I'm saying? Bitch right. dumps, you going to let me have it. Fuck it. So you just got to tell them the fucking truth, man. Your daughter, if you love her, you got to talk to your daughter and deliver her that message. The same, because the world going to give her that message. and But the world ain't going to give her no love. Right. I'm going to yeah. give you the same message the world give you with all the four-letter words and the expletives, and I'm going to show you this is what the fuck. See, this nigga just, I tell my 12-year-old daughter right now, them different boys just want your pussy. They see your fucking titties developing, they're going to tell you anything. Baby, don't be in the car with, with don't, with, with four niggas. Don't just always right. just, you know, wow. just always put yourself in a situation with dudes because they all want some pussy. I don't care. And, then, you know, again, not to switch the subject, but, you know, all this platonic relationship shit, I don't believe in it. I don't kick it with no bitch I ain't trying to fuck. If I ain't trying to <laughs> fuck you or I ain't getting no money, I'm not fucking hanging around you. Wow. So wow. you got to tell them that. These dudes, we don't give a fuck about them. Bobby G doing? got one, and then I'm coming to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Okay. Yeah. This incident did not start at that mall. It started at birth, and um, having been what they say, quote, unquote, uh, deadbeat dad is, and I ain't really following that ideology personally, but that's what I would be classified as because I did not raise my son, and now I have a granddaughter. All I can do is try to pick up the pieces, Mm. all right? But this shit starts from the inception, conception, and I hope going forward young men won't follow my lead and just say, fuck it. You're going to have to find a way to be in your children's life or this is the kind of shit that's going to continue to happen. Ray Grady, Corey, Rizza. Look, man, the, the <laughs> shit is, is real simple and plain, okay? It's real simple and plain. I just know that when it comes down to raising boys, and you, like you just said, all of us in here have had run-ins with a baby mama, Right? So that's separating families. So when you separate the family, then the woman, because your daughter or son, whoever is the custodial parent, mm-hmm. parent, I'm sorry, that's who the child is going to take after. Problem solving. Mm-hmm. You got to know how to problem solve. So when I said to my three baby mamas, give me him, give me him, give me him, because he's going to be a problem He's already a tyrant. Give me that baby because I know what, and all of them just like me. Mm-hmm. So this is how we do it. You want him to, let's not visit him in the uh, penal system. You better let me get involved with him mm-hmm. immediately. And I say it starts around between 8 and 10 years old. Right. Hey, right, but what's fucked up is a lot of women don't understand that because they didn't have no daddy to raise them. No, mm-hmm. they do. Hold on, hold on. Here's the difference. They do. The difference is, Slink. When it come down to having a baby mama, and I got three different ones, okay? Three different bras I deal with. And I'm 42, still got to deal with them because my boys are still there, right? The difference is, yes, they know the issue, but they just don't want, they don't want to give you the credit if you're, if it's not your fucking idea. Mm. It's got to be their idea, and then they be like, okay, cool. I'm going to send him to you because he need his father. There you go. <laughs> you want this one, Cole? Come on, Cole. Okay, now I ain't going to lie. I know I have, it's something different about me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck at what age the baby is that I allegedly have made. Gotcha. I can look a bitch in the face and tell her, let me tell you something. I can walk away from all this shit. I don't shit. give a fuck. I am not finna let myself be destroyed off some shit you about to team up with the government <laughs> to come make it seem like I ain't shit. I'm just gonna leave it alone and then maybe when the baby older, hope I can take it from there. When I can communicate yeah. with the baby because I can't communicate with you. 
That's why when I see, for example, that little girl at the mall who all whatever led up to her getting hit, which is not what any of us wanted in here. No, not at all. I say to myself, wow, I hope that there's some type of intervention for that young lady where she can be around a man she respects so that he can talk to her in a way where she'll listen. But if you stick around a woman that talks to you like you ain't shit because she don't respect you, the child is going to lose respect for you as well. So it's better, in my opinion, to meet the child later on and everything that woman said about you, it don't mean shit because they finna see you finna see who I am right now. That's what happened with my daughter. And that's what happened with my son. But I was lucky enough to have a son by a woman who didn't shit on me around the boy. But my daughter's mother, oh, I wasn't shit. But now my daughter see, I get it. This bitch crazy. <laughs> and 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 Corey left. I ain't gonna lie, I left. I could leave I could walk away from all damaged shit, shit that I feel is gonna have me I, locked up. I don't see I, I don't me. see no wrong with it because at the end of the day you gotta look out for number one. We and motherfuckers animals. you gotta look out for number one, because if you can't look out for no, number one, you can't look out for nobody else. So I can't fucking let you destroy me. I'm trying to fucking take care of you and guide you. And if I can't fucking you are gonna destroy me, I can't do that. But it's don't my they, fault hey, anyway for fucking with hey, you, bitch. Sling, don't they tell you to do that shit on the airplane anyway? Mm -hmm. hey, before, Save yourself hey, Before you put it on your child Put this you put mask it on, on you. yourself exactly. We are animals We have the ability to walk away from the pride mm. If the pride is out of, out of pocket <laughs> I'm not saying it's right It's just that's what I did mm. Brother Rizzo Islam <laughs> Get in here life. man Living your experience. <laughs> Hey correct us life. brother If we wayward correct us I'll say it this way brothers uh, One I appreciate all of you for your honesty <laughs> And I mean that because The first thing we need to do is be honest That's one reason why Black men and black women today are in a condition that we're in. We are, we're not honest about where we are as a people. But number two, the first thing we need to do is, as a man, we have to teach our children protection, the protection aspect. Slink was very serious and very specific when he said, we need to tell our daughters the truth. If you know that there are men in this world who will physically take advantage of your child, if you know that there are men in this country that will literally kidnap your child, Daughter, if you know that there are men who will do anything. Sex trafficking. Sex ahead. trafficking. Yes, yes. Go organ ahead. trafficking. God damn it, they do it all the time, and the government sponsors it. If you know that these things are in existence, then you have to be real about it, even if she doesn't want to accept the truth or not. So you have to tell them the truth from the beginning. And then, two, you have to give them the solutions as to how they can rectify those problems. So they have to know how to defend themselves. If you choose to to have them go and getting a uh, a license to carry, an open carry weapon or concealed carry, that is up to you. In the nation, we don't teach that. However, all of the women in the Nation of Islam know how to fight. They all know martial arts. They all know survival tactics. Well, I, I, I'm, the reason why I bring that up is, is because black white folk get real, real touchy mm -hmm. when black people come together, especially black men, and of say, course. hey, we're protected by the Second Amendment, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can we got the right to bear arms, too. Right. Well, and when we start saying that kind of shit, mm -hmm. they get antsy. Of course. Now, I have a cousin who works in the correctional uh, uh, part of the game up here in, in, in uh, Bakersfield or Fresno somewhere. Mm -hmm. And she, she had some type of device that she told me to get my daughter. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. was like... Mm -hmm. She puts it in her hand. She closes her hand around it, and claws pop out this bitch. Mm -hmm. And she was mm -hmm. like, if she's ever accosted by somebody, mm -hmm. she can take some DNA from his ass because the, the claws collect the DNA of the nigga. Oh, yes. Oh. They're all these. Accosted nigga. Oh, yeah. Accosted <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was the sound in the studio, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Acoustic? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a warehouse club, nigga. Yeah. 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 Right, the hot dogs, right? No, but I say all of that to say, as black men, I tell my son all the time, "Hey, nigga, you talk way too much shit to not know no martial arts." Come on, mm. come on, come on. Mm. I tell him this all the time, "Hey, nigga, you you got a mouth on you, you got a temper too. Come on, you better know some shit." Mm -hmm. <laughs> You see, now with our daughters, mm -hmm. part to me, part of the protection mandate mm -hmm. that is put on men, mm -hmm. take your daughter to take some Wing Chun. Yes. 
some Absolutely. gung fu, mm-hmm. some jujitsu, some mixed martial arts. Absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not saying she's going to be able to whoop every motherfucker. I still mm-hmm. take that. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs> there go Corey. We was almost there. We was almost at that moment of enlightenment. We was, we was right there. We had that moment. It was like, oh, we about to be enlightened. Yeah. This motherfucker. Corey said, "I still none of us hosting the Oscars now." <laughs> no, nah, but you know, but I, you guys saw that yeah, video. Did you see that awards. video, Slink? <laughs> of, the little, uh, of the little girl in Texas. Of uh, the little five foot four MMA. Oh, in Brazil? It, no, it was a it was a woman. She, she I'm gonna pull it up. She beat the snot out of a motherfucker who called himself trying to rob her. Mm-hmm. But he didn't know that wasn't Brazil. I think she's Brazilian. Oh, okay. But he didn't know she was an MMA. Oh, she fucked him up. She too. put the monkey paws all <laughs> up against this motherfucker's <laughs> brow. <laughs> or <laughs> do you understand? She put the she put the Caesar. Hey, hey, hey. hey what hey, about hey. that sister that that that, that, that was socking dude up in the McDonald's? The was sister oh, that was oh, yeah. that was dropping them exactly. dime pieces on dude's and, chin. And, and what people what 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 what, yes. what people don't realize was, though too. Direct punches. She, you could tell she knew what she was doing because she was not missing. I think what a lot of people don't realize, too, especially when we're talking about training our daughters or giving them some type of formal fighting training, any fighting training will probably beat the average motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just give her just a little bit. No, no, no. You're right. Everybody everybody ain't so trained to fight. If she swing, because what if somebody just real good at defense? Yeah. If your daughter is slow and this broad No, no, is hold on. I'm bad. Do that. My bad. <laughs> what, if, what if your daughter is Barbershop. slow? What if your daughter is slow punching or somebody's daughter is slow at punching and the other chick, she ain't really trying to fight. She trying to grab and body slam and break the broad neck. Mm-hmm. That's how you got to think. A lot of people really don't know how to fight. If you mm-hmm. see a boxer, a boxing match is what, three minutes? Mm-hmm. You know how long you got. You, you got to have win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to teach your children how to fight? Run their ass on the sand and go up the hill. Get the win. Get the endurance and, in them. And you then talk that. You, you, you know what? I, I got one better than that because you know again, teaching them to fight is, is is definitely a must. But one thing I try to teach my son and, and my daughter is like learn how to conflict resolution. Learn how if you can yeah, walk you away can if you can walk away from the situation and, and with your integrity and your nuts intact, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. We I told my son we not we 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 ain't gotta fight everybody, but we ain't doing no running either. No, nah, we ain't running. We ain't doing no ain't running. running. Yeah. So figure out how to get out. If you can figure out how to get out out of that without fighting and keeping your nuts intact. Yep. Hey, bro. Corey don't like that. You don't like that, big Go bro? Go Corey. Yeah. You don't like that, big bro. Hey, boy, you better take your daughter to the gun range, because <laughs> these niggas going to get that pussy with them little claws. <laughs> them little claws going to get her poked back. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it ain't good to teach you self-defense, but this is last resort. Yeah. No, you're right. I don't think women are good with guns at all, but it's our daughters, and if we around them, I feel like maybe we can teach them how to be without emotion with this thing mm. that where I'm from is called a goddamn it. It ends all that shit. <laughs> goddamn it! And this, I'm finna show you how to use this goddamn it. Ain't no, ain't no resolution after we pull this off. It's only a funeral arrangement as it is. But don't Let's let see. no motherfucker yeah, don't let that do take it nothing you. from you. That like goes that. to the de-escalation too. Having a of woman course. knowing how to, you know what? I'm dealing with a man who might not be emotionally stable. Like we talked about, like how many butcher knives you took from bitch? Uh, <laughs> how I don't many even keep knives. knives? <laughs> uh, we know karate in the house. We chop everything with our hands. We don't do no knives. But like you know, it's like you said. Ain't no knives in your house. Ain't no knives. Yet? Nah, I got knives. Oh, in my house. Hey, God, <laughs> that's why I'm here. I'm not at home. You this know? nigga lives in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat food you tear. I only eat food. You- <laughs> <laughs> so like you so, so let me let me do this real quick. You're listening to the Voice of Reason on Dash Talk X. I'm Zoe Williams. This is my Mansion series. If this is your first time tuning in to the Mansion series, please understand what a mansion is. It's a palatial estate <laughs> where big ballers live, right? Your mansion is a reflection of your mind. Men right. build mansions. That's right. You understand, like the three little pig, the quality of your mansion is predicated on the materials you use. Mm -hmm. The same thing applies to your thought process. If you're using a thought process that's equivalent to straw or Mm -hmm. sticks 
or hay, your structure ain't gonna stand. That's right. But if you're using bricks like the smart fat pig, that's what kind of mansions we building up in here. Sound like a nigga trying to justify staying in a studio apartment. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> mansion in my mind. If you got this stuck on <laughs> here, it's like Ray's boom boom room. <laughs> if Ray's boom boom room. <laughs> Which hey, is you here is the night. <laughs> Hey, we up in here building tough right now. We talking about how black fathers affect positively and or negatively the development of black daughters. How do we raise them up? How do we teach them the GPS, the spiritual GPS of the streets to avoid all the bullshit that awaits bad dick? Bad niggas, bad investments, bad bitches. Let's not forget, bitches yeah. be bitches' greatest downfall sometimes. How do we teach them, Corey? If you got a baby by a damaged bitch, you got an uphill battle forever. And if you don't know that when you young, you are basically going to hang yourself. A damaged woman... Is something you should avoid. Bitches with tattoos, purple or red hair, bitches who smoke. I'm talking about all you young niggas. If you got a bitch that's, I put it like this: if the bitch under 21 and she's smoking, you can't fix that bitch. Your yeah. job is to get some pussy and get away. Cause if you got a damaged bitch up under you, you cannot focus on your building needs to be who you could be. You're going to be trying to focus on what this bitch talk about. So don't get a damaged bitch. Get a bitch who seems like she has a clear head. How you can tell a bitch got a clear head? Because you can have a conversation with her even when y'all disagree. Corey, what are three wow. ways? What are three ways fathers teach their daughters to value themselves? You got a daughter. I got a daughter. I know what I tell my daughter. What do you tell your daughter that instills value where she goes, you know, I, I'm worth some shit. I mean something. I mean, like this, I don't, I can't come up with three things like, like that. Maybe you got three things you thought of, but I, I'm here to I tell you. shit, but go ahead, Corey. I know you're going to say some real shit, so say it. <laughs> you, a, you a sponge, you a dry sponge in front of your daughter, especially while she's still young. Everything she observes you do, mm. that's what she going to do. Mm. So when you're around your kids, you best be on your best behavior and let them see the best of you because everything you do that's not good, that's what they're going to absorb Absorb more. Yep. Mm. That's what I know about a daughter. You got to, I don't care if your woman argue, what you really got to be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not going to let her see me. Do this. You have to be strong when right. you're around your daughter, especially. Right. Because you're the man example she have growing up. And who you are, that's who she going to fuck with. Right. And, and she I, around you. Hey, 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 that's that's powerful right there. I'm going to go to RZA. And then, of course, my good friend, Slink Johnson. But before I do, I will say this, too. If you so happen to let your kids see the dark side of you, you better not do that unless you also let them see you overcome your dark side. Mm -hmm. Because now they have a blueprint on how to fix what's wrong in them. Mm -hmm. Because what's in you is in them, male or female. So if you do show them that dark side, you better show them the solution to your dark side. Rizza. Once again, I'm thankful that you were honest. Because <laughs> brothers in there, this is something that everybody needs to see is brothers being real about real circumstances and real things. He says something that was extremely powerful, which is everything that she sees you do, she mm. will do. Yep, I told and you. And everything say. that she sees you do or don't do, that is the type of individual she is going to mess with later on. Your daughter is going to look at you because the man is supposed to bring the wisdom to the family. He's supposed to bring the guidance. He's supposed to be the maintainer, the sustainer, and the provider. Not simply monetarily or just with money, not just with a home over your head, but also providing that level of comfort, understanding, uh, feeding who you are or what your daughter is supposed to be, giving her the understanding that she's a queen, she is beautiful, she is pretty, all these different things that she's going to try to find in some other dude if you don't give it to her from home, 
she will go and thirst for it as he brought it up being a sponge. Ooh. She will thirst in swap. You become thirsty for it somewhere else. Wow. So as this brother here and these brothers here are being honest, every woman should allow the man in their child's life to be honest, but as Brother Zoe said, to also bring the positive side to reflect the negative. Slick Johnson. Now me, I, I, I agree with all you brothers, and I, as, as much as I agree with Corey too, you know, as, like not showing your bad side, again, that's part of humanity, and I, I believe as far as it depends on the type of relationship you have with your child. Can you talk to her? Because I do some fucked up shit, and I need to be able to explain and articulate this fucked up shit, too. Because I can't always, I ain't always on my P's and Q's in my house. That's why I'm going to let it all out. I'm going to be myself in my house, so I have to be able to articulate to my daughter, hey, at least tell her, hey, I make some bad decisions sometimes, baby. I do some, some horrible shit. Guys do horrible shit. But don't ever forget the fact that I love you. And that you that you're worth it, and, and and all that. And again, I'm just gonna tell you the fucking truth. A nigga will tell you he could take you to fucking Jupiter and back for a shot of that trim. Yeah, they did. So you know, just just know that. And I want to feel like I always tell myself I don't want to be chasing niggas in the street when my daughter's of age. I don't want to be doing that. I want to game her up, and I feel like whatever she do when she get out there, she those are the decisions you made. You want to make the decision? I want to feel good going to sleep at night knowing that I taught you to make good decisions, even though I might not think it's good. That's the decision mm. you want to make for yourself? Hey. You know, and it's something that we need to understand really quick. As a father, help your daughter to protect her emotions. Mm. Help her to protect and understand when they should be applied. That's, That's something that Everything. we talked about when it came to the situation with this white man and all these sisters around him. If you have power over your emotion, you will not be a slave to anybody. Great, great. Talk that shit. His, he, he said it perfectly. Everybody up here saying the same thing. Mm. We just all worrying the different. But you, you, got, you also got to know your children, they got to see the good and the bad because that's the balance of being human. Mm -hmm. The good balance of daddy going to do fucked up shit and daddy going to do dope shit. But right now, if mama or baby mama or wife and we are having a spat right now. Mm -hmm. This is the shit that goes on. If I'm diligent what I believe in, and she's got to be diligent what she believes in, at the end of the day, the end of the conversation, a motherfucker, you got to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the, That's right. you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's all, it's all encapsulated. Like, everything we've said, like, for instance, when you talk about damaged bitches, what I'm hearing is we need to teach our children to deal with their 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 emotions and their things that happen so they don't become damaged adults because most of what happens is it's the it's the relationship between the parents if you two is fighting and cussing each other out and fighting and cussing each other yeah your daughter's gonna go to the mall and fight and cuss out with some other grown man that she don't know because she's sitting there watching you fight and cuss over little stupid shit oh you was on ig with this nigga oh you was on ig with this bitch like that don't matter we got kids to raise we got these kids. No matter what our personal issues is, we may not fuck no more, but we got these kids raised. Like you said, you went to your baby mom, you said, hey, give them to me. Give them to me. Give them to me. That's where we need to be. Look, I don't necessarily have to fuck with you, baby mama, but guess what? We got these kids, so I'm going to make sure that they see us together as a team. So that when they go out into the world and they meeting people, they like, you know, my mom and daddy wasn't married, but you know what? They respect the fuck out of each other. So I'm only going to fuck with people that respect the fuck out of me. And that's how you teach your daughter self-worth. I want to go back to uh, something that happened when you went outside to uh, tell these people that are still out there talking oh, loud enough for us to hear us in there. I wish we could literally right now all go out there and stand and say, look, we're having a show in here. Show some respect. Because typically when a man says that in a group full of women, they eat him alive. Our women are not seeing men collectively stand for things that are right. Mm -hmm. Because I hear them now, it's just ridiculous, man. It's, it's all part it's of the game, really. And there's a resolution to that. Respect the house. What we're mm -hmm. doing in here is for the benefit of everybody that gets a chance to see this show. It's not about any individual, because collectively, like somebody just said a minute ago, we all saying the same thing, just a different way. Mm -hmm. We are not being heard. Mm -hmm. And we have to make that priority number one. First, be right about it, and then be heard.
Go out there and punch one of them bitches. No, look. <laughs> oh, hey. no what, also, what we have to do. <laughs> we got your, way back on that one, brother. <laughs> once your daughter reaches a certain age, you should introduce your daughter to the other bitches you fucking and let her know that they are important in ways to help you deal with your mama. If it wasn't for these bitches, your me and your be mama, dead. I'll be the kill the bitch. So if I got the bitch around me and I introduce her to you, she must be worth something, okay? So that's what I want you to start doing. Rizza, let me just say this. Reason be trying to hold it in. We done, we got so much video footage of Rizza next to Corey trying to fight it. Like, <laughs> Rizza, this is my dude. I ain't even know this dude that long. But let me tell you something. I pick up on 100 shit. And I'm going to tell you like this, man. I didn't even, I wasn't even shot. Rizzo called me and he got me, I'm going to Savior's Day. I'm from yep. Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So I know the minister's speeches on Savior's Day. Rizzo hooked it up where I'm going and I'm going to be sort of like on the VIP side of the game. Me too. And I'm just saying. We're going to go like, together. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's let's like, do it. Yeah. Everything shows itself. You know what I'm saying? The real shit show itself, man. So... My man Rizzo, it, it is what it is. Wow. It is. Well, I Rizzo got invited to too. Boy, Never, I got invited too. Never, I'll be there. Yeah. Rizzo know I'm a wild boy, but he know what's up. He know I'm, my heart is right for the people. And and listen, man, like, man, like, at the end of the day, we want to have a voice, mm-hmm. but we really want to go to work. That's right. That's really what we want to do. That's right. We want to go to work on ourselves. We want to go to work on our lives. We want to go to work on our relationships. We want to be. <laughs> well, Corey, we want to go. Okay, let's put Corey in. We want to go to work we, on that pussy. We do all, <laughs> we do all that, that work. In. We do all that work, though, talked about for the pussy. Right. We do all that work for good quality pussy. Right. I'm ashamed the bitches I can't stand are the priority. <laughs> what? Get say that on the mic. <laughs> I am ashamed the bitches I can't stand are the priority. They Damn. get they get outfits and dropped off in um safe places because of they pussy. That's what I want to know. Wow. Now listen. See, and you, you wanna know, now, you wanna know how to raise your daughter? I was about to Play say this for. Now ju- now juxtapose that. We'll marginalize and demean women who demean themselves but if our daughter does that we going we going to go off we going to be mad as hell we going to be salty to the motherfucker you going to be mad at yourself we going to be mad at ourselves you, you got to teach her something you, you understand what i'm saying uh oh here we go get that's get it. on the mic that's get actually, on the mic that's Gordon. actually what very you true just say? i just asked so you don't think hoes are born i mean like my niece I knew that oh pussy God. was going to be in the streets when she was about five. <laughs> I knew it because she always used to smile when she see me. Uncle Corey, Uncle Corey. But then one day when I came over with my wife, she did this. She didn't say nothing. <laughs> I was like, oh, you a jealous little hot heifer. My daughters used to do that to my ex-wife all the time. They they would not let her kiss me. They'd be like, oh, no, mom, why are you kissing him? They're 14 now, 14 and 8 now. But this is when they was babies. This is when they was like 3 and 4. That pussy going to be in the streets, homie. I'm here to tell <laughs> but you I'm, like that. What, what I'm trying to call out here no, is... Same street I'm in. But what I'm trying to call out here is, can we be misogynistic? Can we disrespect women while at the same time trying to raise great women? The duality of man. Duality of man. So exactly. that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to bring this want, out. I don't want my daughter to be a stripper, but I love Magic City. Okay. I mean, how, just, can, how can we... Disrespect, demean, demoralize, use up. I done used up a gang of women. Right? I, I can be honest about this shit. I make all my bitches gang bang. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let me give you the mic for that. Because yeah. my, this what? Nigga. All, all, all my bitches gang banging. That's it. Hey. He's a, From Chicago, you got to get on the gang shit. There you go. <laughs> yes. Corey, can't nobody hear you. We want that. No, I said, I said, don't. That was a nice thing. <laughs> Don't let women play dumb when it's convenient for them. Let me tell you something, man. Most women are smart enough to peep out a bad guy. They're smart enough to peep out a bad guy. The ones that hang around the bad guys are normally the bad guys. 
And once in a while, you might meet a girl who lost in the game. Got a dude who game is so tight, mm -hmm. she ain't really peeped what she needed to peep. Right. But most of the time, especially if you was there for your daughter, you can't run game on no woman who has been around a man who done showed her what she need to see. But what I'm saying, Corey. Whether it be bad or good. That's, that's, she done peeped it. But that's fire. But if man directs the energetic current of the feminine, how can we send a mixed message where we value the women that come from our loins but we don't value the women we create them with. Because we do the same thing with men. When we at the basketball court, right. the men who play with respect and don't cheat, we talk to them and approach them differently. The busters who fuck up the whole game and vibe by cheating and their thing, we talk to them like they ain't shit and be ready to fight them. Yeah. Right. So we human do the same thing. thing. It, it goes back to human nature. It's like just as humans, you're going to treat different people differently based on how they present themselves to you. If you it, it's like, I mean, go, one of my one of the the, the, the moments that stand on me on the Cosby show was when Vanessa brought that dude home and he said, yeah, you might be a steak, but she brought you on a motherfucking on a trash, trash can, can lid. lid. Yeah. That's, what the, that's the thing is you present yourself a certain way, you're going to get perceived a certain way. And as humans, we base ourselves on energy. I've, I've, I've met Ray. I didn't know in five minutes. I knew that was a real nigga. We, we jail. That's my dude. There's other niggas I met in this kind of game. I knew the second I talked to him now, nah, we ain't fucking, and I treat him differently. Ray and that's how we do with women. He ain't no real nigga. <laughs> Ray. Ray Williams. Uh, Ray, Ray, Ray Williams. Williams. Child Ray seven. Ray. Ray. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Y'all be looking at shit like that. But I want to tell you something. If you walk in on your daughter sucking dick at age 15, your daughter was meant to suck dick. That's what I want to say. That I might be well, foul thing, to some We people. humans. We go experiment. Nigga, I was fucking at 15. I can't be mad at them doing shit. I was trying to do at 15. The key is teaching them how to make the decision on who to do it. And the and, 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 let me, let me say this. And not burn mindset. yourself out. Exactly. My youngest out. child's mother told me once. All you do is talk. I didn't feel bad about it. Bad. Oh, no. No, 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 no. She said, all you do is talk. I said, yes, I'm a philosopher. <laughs> and the two children you jealous of have the philosophy. You want your son to have the philosophy, but you want to filter it through your mouth. But it's coming from my mind. You don't want to be in your position. You understand? dig? Oh, you talk too much. Well, what are you telling them? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to make it personal but I, just, <laughs> I, but I just said What are you telling them See You look at the two That you jealous of These motherfuckers Is off to the stars right now But because you bitter You don't want To allow me To do what I did With the older two Now now watch this. You're not going to let me do what I did with the older two? You're going to have to live with the consequences of the decisions you make and the child you mold. Mm -hmm. Now, these other two, they off, like I said, to the stars. But most women don't hit they gone. Like they they gone. I had a conversation with her uncle once. I done, I done studied religion. You you see you see how we talk. You, you know when we down at the cigar lounge. I didn't had. I've been studying religion since I was seventeen. I know it backwards and forward, backwards and forward. Multiple religions. She got into it with her uncle, trying to regurgitate some shit. She heard me say, but didn't know how to say it, and didn't know the context in which I said it. The man was like, who is this motherfucker who told you this shit? Because they was Muslim. Mm. Interesting. 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 Oh, they was National, nation. They, they, they was nation. And you need to know your stuff if you're talking about this. I show up <laughs> and I sit down and crack open the Quran and begin to read it in Arabic. Mm -hmm. I rocked them for four hours. Mm -hmm. And the man said, I humbly apologize. 
He turned to her and said, this your dude. His gift ain't yours because he's your dude. (laughs) He said, I ain't never heard nobody break down the Quran like that. He said, what you need to do is walk beside him and get off his coattails. You don't have the same gift he got. See, have you ever been bold enough to tell her that you regret your seed passed through her? What? <laughs> wow. Yeah. But that makes perfect sense. God bro. damn. He went wrong in the wrong one is what he said. <laughs> so, you piece of shit. Can't shoot up on the clubs. <laughs> I, have, I told in the DJ my daughter shit. mother, you are the biggest <laughs> mistake I have ever oh, landed in. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I'm just glad my daughter act like me. Ooh. My daughter. Look, she smirked, she smiled like, damn, you crazy. She just... you no, know, my daughter got characteristics of her mother and characteristics of me, but if you study both of us, anybody will say she act like her father because her mama ain't really doing shit, and that be the truth. If you watch watch people, especially when they're in their 40s, because ain't no excuse that today. The world come what are you doing? I ask people that all the time. What are you doing nowadays? Them motherfuckers <laughs> really don't be having <laughs> shit to say. I'm trying to tell you. When you're in your 40s, the world show up. This is who the fuck you really is when the world show up. When you turn 40 at that 40th birthday party. 40 and beyond. That's it for your retarded, dumb, mindless ass. Because no you done wasted money. 20 years of bullshitting trying to take your baby daddy child support court. You done fell off. You done got bigger. You understand there's a difference between solids and sugars. Now, you didn't develop diabetes, you fucking whore. You fucking whore. Know your place. When you're 40, the world show up. How about that? I love it. When you're 40 and older. Get on the mic, Corey. I just turned 40. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Mansion Series. We getting it in today. This is real conversations. Slink Johnson is in the building. Hey, A.K.A. Hey, hey. A. Black Jesus. Mm. Hey, Corey Holcomb is in the building. Mm. A.K.A. A. Booty. Black <laughs> Jesus sidekick. Black yeah. Jesus sidekick. And Rissa Islam and Chris Riggins and Bobby Glanton and Ray Grady. Hey, I keep telling everybody my 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 latest or my last book. The Relationship Dismount, How to Stick the Landing When Exiting a Toxic Relationship is available on Audible. It's the number one new release since Janu- uh, since December 28th. In- Audible is available right now. Get it. Get it. Get it. You're listening to the Mansion series. We building on black fatherhood and how to raise socially intelligent black women. But can we do it if we despise the worst of them? Mm. Rizza? I can tell you now, brother, the father is the one who helps to take you farther by giving you the wisdom that you need as a man, as a woman, et cetera, et cetera. So as a man, and I'll just say this in today's society right now, this is one reason why all the men in the room need to remain men. Because they are now attacking manhood as much as they can. Man. The American Ooh. Psychiatric Association has now classified masculinity as being toxic. So they're saying that you have toxic masculinity if you want to be a natural man. They're saying you have toxic masculinity if you teach your daughter that, listen, there's, there's some messed up brothers out here. And also you need to protect your damn self. And, you know, if you're going to cry, fine. But, you know, be tough and tell, you, tell your son, look, look, be tough. Somebody in your face, punch him in their mouth. All of that is now seen as toxic. Mm. So what they're doing is flipping the script. And this whole term of toxic masculinity originated by two Caucasian males. One of them is a homosexual. Uh. So you have to know where this is going. So as much information as we can give right now, I will absolutely say is do not abandon your manhood at all as a man. And that that includes arguments with the woman. We have to make sure we maintain our position (laughs) so that we can work together side by side. Don't raise your voice in my house, woman. And there, there's, yeah. there, there's also toxic <laughs> femininity. Yes. Listen, toxic behavior women from everybody. Who don't, like, women who don't wash the tub out after they get <laughs> in it. See, real. That's, that's, that's not toxic. toxic. That's evil. That's not toxic. That's evil. That's just wrong. That's, it's toxic, women, and then it's just. 
Right. Bitch, you need to die. Like, Women, just, <laughs> like if you after sex, if you lay on your back, if they don't go get the towel to wipe you off, that's toxic femininity. <laughs> you can't grow that with That bitch them is in it for women. herself. She <laughs> don't what care about say. herself. The, the, the tripped out part, what he just said was, it was all true, right? But here's the, the funny part to it. Even when cats know the truth, they still love and believe the lie. Oh, yeah. It's more easy. They still believe the lie. It's more comfortable. Go ahead. The reason, the lie is <laughs> that being a man is wrong nowadays. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like I'm an alpha male. I pride on it. I only really talk to them. I don't talk to sweet niggas. <laughs> and I'm not saying his sexual preference. I'm just saying he ain't no stand-up dude, so we can't be around each other because mm-hmm. that bullshit going to rub off, and right. I'm going to get offended. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, where your father? You got to hang with your daddy, nigga. You can't be over here with me. We don't eat grapes off the stem and pass it to one another. You understand what I'm saying? His, problem, his woman can dis- his, his, his woman can dick. She can come in the card eat game. Grapes off exactly. The thing, exactly. And, and we don't check. Them. Bitch, don't you see we play a card? <laughs> if you don't get out of here with all this filth in the room. Here's but that's what I'm saying. When it comes down to knowing the truth. So what he's just saying is it's all toxic, right? So even like I said, when that's it comes down saying, to trying, that's what they saying, exactly right? What so wrong, when they say masculinity, like being a male, being a heterosexual male is wrong, quote, in entertainment. Exactly. I said it enough times, the new mom and pop stores is fucking entertainment. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the new mom and pop stores, entertainment. So now we saying, okay, well, we can't be liked because I don't want to do what you into. What you doing in your house is your own fucking personal yes. business. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody have to agree with that shit, and don't nobody have to be around it. Because right. if you come to my crib, you ain't got to take your shoes off. But I'll go to yours, you might have to take your shoes off. Who gives a shit? It's just people lack the respect of others. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. And That's... it all boils down to respect. So the way you raise women, uh, your daughters to be a woman, you put them around real women. Mm-hmm. That know they place. It ain't got nothing to do with being, you know, she got to be subservient. We ain't fucking Japanese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who are women who know they place? Girls who got fucked up. You don't know like Corey. Women who know <laughs> their role. Men who know their role. Corey. <laughs> hey, Corey, you got to say that on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked Grady, who are women who know they place? Women who got fucked up before when they got out of line. <laughs> wow. I like to say stuff like that because it makes people scared. Yeah. They be like, oh, really? Be that scared. is what it's the it levity. Is. We need the levity. We need that. We need that energy. Yo. Here's what I want to say. Which we were talking about toxic masculinity. I'm one of those people that believe there's toxic behavior in everybody. We all have toxic behaviors that are personal, that are based on all our experiences, that are based on a lot of things. My issue is this. There is forms of toxic femininity, toxic masculinity. What we need to do is stop the broad brush. That's my issue with it. Not What's saying the broad brush? The broad brush is when... Is that a feminine brush? No, no, no. What okay, it is cool. is, is like, okay, I, I'll, use, I'll, use the me, I'll use the Me Too <laughs> movement now. What's happening is, yes, men should be accountable for when they do wrong. But the problem is we've waited so long to hold people accountable for their shit, and even on a personal level. That's what we do in our families. We wait so long to hold our man or our woman accountable for shit they did to piss me off that when it comes out, I go off on everything. I go off on the shit you did five years ago. I go off on everything instead of focusing rationally, not emotionally, on the problem. The problem is, men, we have issues. Women have issues. The issue is none of us wants to look at ourselves and say, hey, I fucked up. But, but see, on, if, you, on, 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 if you went see, a whole week without checking your bitch, you are out of line. But here's the thing. What is checking? Everybody has, wait, it's wait, like wait, you wait, said, wait, in your wait, house Chris, checking Chris, is Chris, one Chris, thing, Chris, 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 and Ain't equality, no equality, it doesn't exist. Right. See, if the Me Too movement was about equality, there would be a He Too movement. Mm-hmm. Because there are some offenses that happen the other way yes, around. men are raped all So time. there are no absolutes. But what's happening is there's a narrative that's being put out that's saying masculinity is toxic. Okay. And that's why I said the broad so, rush. So, uh, no, but, if equality no, 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 no. is real, if somebody break in the house, bitch, you go downstairs and handle that shit. Right. Now I'm that's, stay in the bed. Right. You, you, you study jujitsu. Get your ass down there and wrestle the burglar. <laughs> and that comes so, well, it's a but, but, but let me finish Get this. Get your talk. ass out in that rain and change that tire, bitch. <laughs> right. Right. So, but let me throw this one too. Because we're talking about toxic masculinity. 
There is a really radical feminist concept mm-hmm. that fervently believes all is that men are obsolete and unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Which came from Caucasian. Now, is that women. toxic? I'm just saying. You got a Gillette commercial out right now right. talking about toxic masculinity. Right. Just came out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me Ellen DeGeneres has Wrong. never heard of that radical feminist concept that says men are obsolete and unnecessary? Cher has come out and said it. Mm-hmm. Men are useless. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? All is that not toxic? Yeah. Femininity? Here's the Absolutely. thing. Any extreme of anything is bad. But what, Any extreme of anything. We so get that. There's nuances in everything we do. In all of life, there's nuances. So, yes, there are bad men, but there are a lot of really great men. Fucking too. a bitch to so the extreme can't say, is not bad. We can't say everything is bad. Like, I don't agree with the idea that men are obsolete. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the idea that all masculine. I agree that men need to be masculine. We need to have that if energy. That's that, the equality uh, I'm talking about. Like, but here's the thing. Corey, this is what I'm talking about, no. equality. Take a football team. A quarterback doesn't do what the linebacker does. They're both equal coaches on the team, but they don't do the same jobs. That's what it is. Women have different jobs than men do. We have to accept our jobs and our roles in that system, but that doesn't mean we have to belittle each other. Most niggas is not going to cut the grass when he's too busy picking up the kids and doing lunches and shit. He ain't going to shovel no fucking snow. Because the broad done already told him what to do. You can't go out. I got the car mm-hmm. if you got one car. Yeah. So all men, it's not going to be the same. That's, yeah, why you gotta go, men, exactly. that's why you got to split it a little bit. Exactly. Most no, men ain't going to be a legit if he know the broad is one with the money. Exactly. He going to play. He, he gonna play the road. The problem reverse. with these movements is they don't. Right? The brother, problem with the movements is they don't with the gray brother, area. Let me ask you a question. If your house is a democracy, is it being ran wrong? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You gave a political... Okay. Uh, uh, uh. So you want to view it now. If you want to switch, okay, we'll do it this way. If everyone knows their role, as brother was saying, then everyone will be successful and equal in their own position. It's very simple. All the body parts within your body do not argue with one another. They Ooh. operate united in one effort. We have a specific mission. The heart pumps the blood. The lungs process the oxygen. The kidneys push the uh, levels of chemicals that bring. Balance within your blood sugar. The brain processes all the information. Your nervous system passes through all the thoughts to go to every single one of your limbs. They do not argue. The problem in this society is that Europeanized, Caucasianized, which is a word that I just made up, and white supremacy. It's real. It's a real word. White supremacy has pushed this agenda, which is we must put the black man and woman and original man and woman and men and women in general against one another mm-hmm. to take away from the fact that, one, the Caucasian population is dwindling. They are dying faster than they are being born, number one. Number two, this entire world of white supremacy is coming down, and they cannot stand the fact that mm-hmm. this world is going back to righteous people. And we are taking it back over to do things that are not going to be destructive to them. But for some reason, they believe that we're going to do to them what they did to us, which is yeah. put them in slavery, do all these destructive things, which is not going to happen. So the point is, Caucasian men and Caucasian women are coming up with all these things. Toxic masculinity, men being obsolete, when none of this stuff agrees with logic, it does not agree with, bi- with biology, and it does not agree with reason. So we have to get back to knowing who we are, what we are, our name, our culture, our religion, or should I say our way of living. And that way we'll return back to what is optimum and what is best for us as a people. You yep. are listening to the voice of Brother Riza Islam. He just <laughs> dropped some science. This is the Voice of Reason Mansion series. Corey Holcomb, Ray Grady, Slink Johnson, Chris Riggins, and my man Riza Islam. Of course, I'm Zoe Williams, the Voice of Reason, live on Dash Talk X. Corey. If your woman expects you to open the car door, then you are dealing with a woman that you cannot be with long term. When you're in the streets, bitch, we in a rush to get to the car. <laughs> you open the fucking door. Get your, your side, own door. I'm going to open the door on my side, and we about to get the fuck from over here. Bitch. Well, it's it's a communication thing. Everybody, You're going to slow us different. down if I got to open your door. <laughs> right. What bitch. works with your women and you is not going to work for me and my women. It's not going to work for Ray and his women. Everyone has to define their own relationship. And the communication well, is, totally. if that's the relationship you want, and you tell her and she can gel with it, go with it. I'm Bobby not mad G. at nothing. Hey, Chris, let, let Bobby get in here. That's how it oh, should be. There. This is not a democracy. <laughs> Bobby G. Yeah, we started the show off talking about the situation at the mall. And what are we supposed to do with our children? Uh, The Maasai tribe ruled successfully for several hundred years. And it started with one key element. How are the children? We stop asking that question. 
how are the children right from generation the reason they were able to rule the world successfully for several hundred years they never got out of balance the children always came first that was the focus and they taught them certain principles and certain precepts our only salvation will come when we recognize that the children are first and that means they have to be taught certain things and it's not a, it's not a something that we negotiate about because look at where we are right now, utter chaos, because there's no order. But, but Bobby, you're saying something very profound. The children can't be put first as long as the dollar and white Jesus is ahead of them. But then, then here's what happens. Here's what happens. Your little 11-year-old daughter gets knocked out at the mall. There's a consequence. No, no, no. I didn't say what you said was wrong. No, I'm not saying that you're saying that what I'm saying is wrong. I'm just saying that this is what happens once we lose that order. Yeah, right. I, I, I was. Exactly. I, I was late for that. But, yeah, I, that, that I was shocked and, and, and appalled by it all. But at the same time, I, had to, I, I, didn't, I, I saw the video. I didn't really listen to it or read too much into it. But I just saw the video and I just got one question. How do you end up there? How do you as a grown ass man end up arguing with some motherfucking little girls? And as a little girl, again, back to the parents, you gotta teach these motherfuckers respect. I be teaching my children since they were born. My oldest one twenty four. You have to respect adults. You respect adults. If they fuck you over after you respect them, then I got a free reign to go and do what the fuck I want to do with their ass. Yeah. But it's some That's fucking respect. Order. How did you end up in that like how does a little girl end up arguing with a, a grown ass white man? Yeah. How do you get there? And I'll you at the mall eleven by yourself. By your fucking yeah. self. Yeah. Yes. What who, who who where's the supervision? I ain't and, never and for been that at reason, the mall at eleven I, by myself. On, on some <laughs> other shit. On some other shit, I didn't even I don't my my children are not going to school today due to the strike because not not because not just because they don't they not learning nothing nor or, or I feel like yeah I do stand with the teachers but I keep them home for that I kept them home because inadequate supervision everything can fucking happen with this inadequate supervision right. these people don't know my child uh fucking my child don't know them and you know the other kids don't respect nobody so I'm not as concerned with my child doing no fucked up shit as I am with you being dumb and following the motherfuckers is doing the fucked up shit. That's wow. what it was. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So let's do this. The phone lines, we're going to open them up so we could get some dads and some different opinions. Dads what, and sperm donors. What are you teaching your <laughs> child, your daughter specifically? What are you teaching her about self-respect? You better teach her something or Cardi B going to teach her. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> caller, <laughs> hey caller, you're on the answer. line. What's your name? Where you calling from? You got to turn your turn your video down so you, we can hear you, man. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where you calling from? Caller, are you there? I'm in uh, Mobile. Calling. I'm Brittany. Calling from Mobile. Hey, Brittany. What up, Brittany? Speak hey. on it. Dirty. Y'all, uh, see y'all, hear y'all, talk to y'all. Uh, I'm that Virgo you've been wanting to call in for a while now. And uh, I'm at work, so I'm about to get situated. I just want to tell y'all, shout out to Corey. I wish you were my dad, Holcomb. You would have put me on game. I wouldn't have uh, done some of the things I've been doing. But uh, I just want to say what y'all doing is so important. And uh, when it comes to uh, what's going on right now, we have to have the mentality of if it happens to one of us, uh, it happens to all of us. And we can't keep going. If it was my son, if it was my daughter, it was. We in this together should be. Um, as a woman who don't uh, put y'all through a lot of what I hear y'all speaking on, um, I love y'all, like, so much. And uh, I haven't been given the same back. But when it comes to y'all, um, I hear y'all. I want to give all y'all hugs. And um, and I know that hugs and kisses aren't enough. And as I'm growing into my strength, learning that uh, we have things to fight for. And I don't know anyone around me who has the desire to fight as hard and stand on something worth standing on. Doesn't value, I don't value money. I was able to give money. I was the sugar mama. I was the one who would give the love. When you needed to feel like a man and you weren't where you thought you wanted to be, and it's like, what's going, what is it going to take to stop this cycle? Well, listen, listen, young lady, we appreciate your call. We appreciate the passion 
and the the depth of the breath that you shared with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for the call. Thank you, love. Call anytime. Hey, I'm so sick of these dudes. They in here cutting up. I'm trying to keep. But you, you. You helped out on that. Like, all right. <laughs> all right. Hey, man. That's what you tell people. So, that's what you tell people. Yeah, okay. Isn't it evil to live backwards? Ooh. <laughs> God you, damn. You got to be one who can endure. That's what you want, like, like Bobby in that sweater, hot as it is in this room. He's that's endurance. endurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You gonna put those down on Tuesday? You know what I'm talking about. I know because I have my mom. Hey, let's get another caller in here. Caller, you're on the line. What's your name? Where you calling from? Speak on it. Hi, uh, my name is Rienzo. I'm calling from Chattanooga. How you guys doing tonight? Chat Town, you in the building? What's happening? (laughs) Hey, what's up? What's up, Joe? What's up, Zoe? And what's up, Corey? I love to listen to the 5150, but I'm going to make this quick. Okay. My parents have been, uh, have been married for 53 years. Even when my parents would have any type of situation growing up, I never seen my father react in a irrational way. Never saw that. Never saw that in all my life. As I got older... And I started maturing and, you know, dating or whatever and going to college or whatnot. You know, I would see dudes just do the most, just be extra, just going off, just hollering, just acting like a bitch. And that was just not what I saw growing up. That was not what a man was to me. So it probably took me forever to get married because it seemed like most of my life I saw just a bunch of irrational men. And unfortunately, that was a part of our generation because a lot of our men didn't grow up seeing men as they had gotten older. So they grew up in a female-dominated household, and that's why they acted like women. So I just, I'm just glad that you all are on the show talking about some things and talking about how, you know, we as in, a, in our culture need to act or men need to act and men need to respond. And shout-out to the brother Rizzo. I believe. Rizza. Rizza Islam. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Rizza Islam. Shout out to the brother Rizza Islam for talking about the roles and the positions that we play. And as men, men need to stay men, and men need to have the characteristics of men, and women need to have the characteristics of, of women. It needs to be traditional. It has worked for thousands of years. I don't understand why now we, we're claiming that it does not work. We're talking about masculine, uh, toxic masculinity or whatever it is, and we need to get beyond that. We need to stop talking about that. And being masculine is not a negative. We need that. It, it creates balance. Baby girl, you can't, so. you can't make 17 points. Look so here, man. I'm gonna need I'm you. I'm look sorry. here. Uh, I need you to make that. Yeah, thank you, sweetheart. We appreciate it. Look here. Look here, Zoe. <laughs> yeah. We need masculinity. And the quote, Ice Cube. You know, ladies, you want a nigga that's stronger than you, not a nigga that be in the mirror longer than you. Ooh. Break a nail in his bitch ass looking for glue. You want a nigga with a hard dick looking at you. Yep. Come on now, y'all want niggas to be soft. You want niggas to fucking understand and fuck. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that shit. That's what make our relationship so perfect, baby. I don't give a fuck about That's days of our lives. That's real shit. You gotta, you gotta tell you, bitch. I ain't got the fucking stool. I pay the rent in this motherfucker. You fucking right. That's you the fuck I got you for. That's the fuck I got you for. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't. Put seat down yourself. You ain't outside. You ain't outside cutting the lawn, is you? You know what I'm saying? When, right. the, when the motherfucking, when the when your car went, went out, when you needed a jump, you called me, right? You didn't get your ass out there and hook them cables up your goddamn self, did you? So go clean up the goddamn house. If you don't clean the drawers, another bitch will. I tell you that I much. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> man, shit, right? Hey, hey, tell them about your new show here on Dash Comedy. Marcus King presents Dash Comedy. Oh. 
Tell them about your new show, Oh, it's man. off the chain. I'm finna go to that motherfucker right now. We starting about 20 minutes, about 10 minutes. Yeah, Marcus King presents Dash Comedy. Smoke yours with Slink Johnson and the homeboy Shady Chris. Well, you all are welcome to be guests of that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Please come grace my microphones. Every Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. right here on Dash Radio. Fuck with your boy. Bring me some weed. You know what I'm saying? Give me some pussy if you like me. You under dig? Hey, listen, we ain't got all the goddamn answers. But we do have to have these man councils where we sit down and break this shit down because a lot of people ain't never heard it put so matter-of-factly, so bluntly. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go around the table and get everybody's tip, you know, or word of wisdom, insight for raising a daughter. Number one, I tell my daughter, your virginity is your divinity. You are not an ATM machine and your vagina, <laughs> right, does not dispense nothing but kids and debt because we not wealthy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to run up out of here. It's a bread factory. You got a bread factory. Motherfucker said yeast. <laughs> I tell her, I tell her. Know the difference between a man's character and his characteristics. Yeah. I tell her, don't be duped by talent. Mm. Just because a nigga's talented don't mean he ain't flawed. R. Kelly. Because a lot of times women get caught up in the Me. talent of a brother. And they think, oh, he's just this, he's just so special with his talent. But the nigga crazy. He's bipolar. Yeah. You know, even Donny Hathaway had kids. I don't mean to say Rain that. Man. Okay, I'm sorry. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so, <laughs> Corey, I want some fish today. Corey, tell me a couple of things, you know, that you would tell your daughter that builds her up. That's We, we need to give up some tips before we get out of here. Well, I have told my daughter, I'm telling you, you only get two, maybe three chances with your body to get it right. After the fourth dude, your pussy belong to the game. Yeah. So pick wisely. Mm. Pick wisely <laughs> while you young. Look at Rizzo. So later in life. Hold it together, Rizzo. You are around a friend that's going to have your back for the rest of your life. Pick wisely. You can't be around the motherfucker. You like him because of looks, talent, like so said. Ooh. You have to pick the motherfucker that really got your back. And he's mm. going to show you who that is. Yeah. That pussy depreciates in value. Hole, though. <laughs> Reza? <laughs> I'll say according to what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, one, according to the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, no nation can rise any higher than its woman, which means the woman has to be of the utmost quality. She has to understand exactly who she is, what she possesses, and understand that there is no such thing as a man that got here without a woman. And according to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, no man can call himself a man without a woman. Mm. So when men running around and you can't really call yourself a man entirely unless you are able to maintain, sustain, and protect a woman. Some more! <laughs> uh, on, on top of that, I'll say that heaven lies at the foot of the woman. So we all have been through hell, I would say, to a degree when it comes to a woman. Mm. Or I should say, I mean, I should say, y'all yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can also switch that into a heaven because I would say you have also experienced a degree of heaven as well when things were proper and things were yeah. balanced. Slink, True. absolutely. Your final thought before you run My to your show? My final thought, I said it already. Just tell them the truth. Quit fucking sugarcoating this shit for these little girls. Tell her the fucking truth. That nigga do not like you. He don't like you like that, baby. I don't even really like your mom. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for the fact that I needed help with you, God damn it, I wouldn't be here. Ooh. But God damn it, he don't like you. You know, like yourself. Learn to like yourself more. And don't, don't look for love. Don't look for like Ooh. For, or love from another motherfucker until you found it in yourself. There we go. You know what I mean? And then once you find it in yourself, everybody else's love is just a bonus. There you go. Bobby, get yours in. Thank, Thank you, Slink. For all the ladies, be divine with your power. Because a man, a woman will jump up on the table at the sight of a mouse. But she can bring a man down big as a house. Oh, Wow. What? what? Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to Mansions. Chris, you got your final? My final is just this. These brothers have said so much, I can't even say nothing to else, but think for yourself. 
Don't allow the think society to think for you. Think for yourself. Hey, this is the voice of reason. I got to get my man Ray Grady in here to wrap this motherfucker up. Ray, you got 30 seconds to bring the house down. Everybody else killed it. If you fuck up here. <laughs> Look here. Teach your daughters. Know your fucking place. Men, know your place. Get in your shit. Because what happens is you never get over being hurt. Hurt people always fucking hurt people. Mm. So just because you done been through some bullshit, side nigga, get around some niggas that's going to tell you what the real is. I ain't that. They ain't never met a motherfucker out here that them went undefeated in life, ever. Mm. Ever. Mm-hmm. So when you go around here acting like you don't need us, you don't need the bitch and all that, all that old negative shit you talking, just look at your daughter, look at your sons. Because if you ain't got shit to give to them, because you lifeless. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker, man. Mike Drop. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Voice of Reason Mansions concludes. We don't have all the answers, but we do know how to start the conversation. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. All the phone calls we didn't get to. Everybody in the chat room. Amen. All the children sing. Amen. Amen. Let Rizzo sing. Now, <laughs> now we leave appreciate your y'all in the back with Sister Johnson. <laughs> the voice of reason we out, deuces. Jesus gonna save you. I get that push. That's the that voice of reason. So when Ray Grady was Chris Riggins and Corey Oakham, Dash Radio, Brother Chris and Islam. Ah, crazy. Oh, 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 o